Official Strongman Games, event six, circus dumbbell. Athletes will press a series of four circus dumbbells increasing in weight from ground to overhead in the fastest time possible within 60 seconds. Time and total dumbbell pressed is your score. Time stops when the athlete receives the down command on the fourth dumbbell. Athlete begins at the starting line. Athlete must wait for judge's down command to receive a good lift and proceed to the next dumbbell. Athlete can clean the dumbbell to shoulder with both hands and touch the dumbbell, but must only have one hand touching the dumbbell at the start of each press. Dumbbell is not allowed to touch or rest on the athlete's head. Athlete must demonstrate control of the dumbbell after each rep. If the dumbbell lands and bounces off the rubber mats, the lift will be taken away. No straps, hook, ta hooks, tacky, tactiles, or grip shirts allowed. So dumbbell medley. What's your take on dumbbell medley, Tom? Again, the main thing is you've got to be strong before you can be enduring. So you need to build up levels of maximal strength. I don't think you need to get comp specific uh, close than six, for example. You maybe be able to do it in four. Um, the circus dumbbell is a slightly different animal to the monster dumbbell in my opinion the i mean if it's a circus dumbbell with the globes on the end sometimes they can be big small but i don't find you can use so i have a speed technique that i recommend people use and it's not my technique i just watch uh dimitar 17 off do it and the way he thrusts it off his shoulder so obviously preparing quicker techniques might be useful but it's harder with the circus dumbbell compared to the monster dumbbell so with it being a dumbbell ladder like how would that differ from say do it got going for a, going for a max or like say dumbbell for reps in terms of your approach so yeah as i as i said get get strong for the first oh, sorry, sorry, Tom, yeah. no no it's fine we'll, we'll recap it but if we get strong and then after when we get towards six weeks and out then it starts it's all about specificity um the the, the problem with the specificity is not everyone has four circus dumbbells yeah um so there's an issue there. So a lot of people are going to have to just work with one dumbbell and get good at it. Um, I would look to obviously get as big a dumbbell as you can, but at least if you could take the average, if you're in the 90 kilo category and you can do four reps with the 80, I think you're going to be comfortable being able to do the ladder. So there are ways around it, but sometimes that's the beauty of strongman because you can't train everything specifically because you don't have access to all the equipment. So it's, some, it's something to consider. Um, I like, I'm, I'm like you, success leaves clues, and I'll pick the people that can move the dumbbells the quickest. And I think Novikov is, is one of the best in the world. Mattis Belsek was one of the best. Sevatinov moved it quickly. Um, and I, I would try and look at what Novikov is doing. If you look at the speed, he gets it into the rack position, yeah. and it's stable, and he just he goes. And I would monitor that, and I would look at how he's doing things. Um, what are your takes on either technique or, or training with this event? Watching the, these people who've do, done it really well, like um, I think um, you know, like say, say some people have said to me, "Oh yeah, th this event would be great for you if you did it." Where if I just turned up right now and did it, like it wouldn't necessarily, like I, I wouldn't be that like and use the technique that I used for doing the doing a maximal whiff that I did recently. Like the, the technique, I wouldn't be using that technique for the first couple of dumbbells anyway, if you will. And it wouldn't, like, I think it, it's, it, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's brilliant. Like there's so many, there's so many different ways you can approach it. But, but like you say, using the, the technique that, 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 that Novikov uh, uses where he almost, like it basically it's like a power clean from the floor, isn't it? A power clean. And then he, as he receives the power clean, He's using, it's almost like a reactive rep, what we described before on the Viking press. He's like, receive the power clean and that dip or the flex of the knees, hips and ankles, he's using that as the as to drive out of straight away. Um, so what I would say is if you're strong enough to uh, push press the implements, like push, uh, like, or a number of implements, they're going to be, it's going to be, uh, a quicker route from A to B and getting that down command than doing a jerk and receiving a jerk and stuff. But if you feel like you're going to need need a jerk as you fit for the the later events, that uh, sorry the the later reps. Um, I suppose being being being, being versatile with a number of techniques is really going to be valuable. Um, the just touching back on what you said about the 
the how it differs from like the monster dumbbell to the these globe style dumbbells or whatever. So like a, a, a big thing is like with the loadable dumbbells. Like sometimes I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this, but like sometimes you like say if you start with a forty or fifty kilo dumbbell and you put it up to you add weights to the center and you put it up to 50 60 70 sometimes in that range like 60 kilos or 60 70 kilos can actually feel easier to balance and stabilize in the rack than the empty dumbbell and um the reason for this is like when you're when you're adding adding weight to the loadable dumbbells is like you're adding weight to the center and you're making that kind of the the kind of center of mass like um kind of like like where, where most of the weight is it, or yeah mo most of the masses is 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 smaller than say when the dumbbell is empty and, it, and it's kind of the, the i'm struggling to explain it a little bit you know what i mean tom maybe you can articulate sure. it a little bit better um but basically the the the, the globe dumbbells like the object is going to be like, like what i what i get people to envisage on a loadable dumbbell even though it's say maybe shaped like so like most of the weight is if you most of the weight if you load it up is actually it's like that so i get them to imagine it like almost like a more spherical shape whereas you can't do that with a with a globe 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 style dumbbell so the rack therefore like on this kind of using this spherical an analogy with a loadable dumbbell here if you've got a rack here even though the the dumbbell might be pointing over there. Most of the weight is is quite easy to keep close to your center of mass because that sphere, it, that imaginary sphere, is is already quite close. With the globe dumbbell, yep. the weight's distributed um, over the whole kind of like throughout the the whole object. So it's like a, a rectangle rather than a, a square almost. So therefore, you might find that it's as easy to clean in terms of force production you may even find it easier than some monster dumbbells that are like say the big diameter monster dumbbells if they're a bit smaller the globes you may find them even easier to clean but it's the rack position that's going to catch people out if they don't train on the specific implement because basically if the that bit of the dumbbell here whereas in a monster dumbbell it, it, it's actually not holding much weight with a globe dumbbell it's pulling you over there so in in terms of again playing around with technique if you if you if you get a chance to um access to these dumbbells what some people may find is that actually getting the kind of the dumbbell point it like finding a rack position that gets the dumbbell more pointing up towards the sky than out to the side is going to logically bring that kind of center center of mass closer to your center line which is the kind of goal gold standard in my opinion yeah. um what so you 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 talked about on the on the viking press before you were saying about like in, interesting now we've got we've got a push press uh, thing a push press event yeah. and then the, you described the dumbbell as a as a as a as a jerk as a kind of jerk event so mm. what 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 would what would you say to people why if they like say they like talk, talk to us about the benefit of a jerk in the, in the the in the dumbbell well the the dumbbell so the viking press to me is you know strength event strength endurance you're going to get a bit of grind or you can get a bit of grind the circus dumbbell there's no grind or not usually you don't see it often um, you don't see many push presses that will end up you know grinding through it's a skill event and with a skill event it's like juggling you know, if you want to juggle or you want to improve your juggling you don't juggle once a week you juggle multiple times a week yeah. I'm not saying you want to do circus dumbbell multiple times a week, but it's possible um, to, to get the skill right. Um, but I like the fact that we're testing, you know, pressing power, pressing strength, pressing endurance. But then you get to day three, there's an element of skill, there's an element of athleticism. There's no difference. I like it when you look at the, the event and there's different qualities being tested. It's not just max effort all the way through. There's different things. And if we, another thing I teach my guys with the dumbbell is always to power clean it. Now, what I mean by a power clean is from the floor straight to the shoulder. None of this pick up, drop down, double movement. I get 
that sometimes a max effort dumbbell, you might need that, i.e. your world record, you did 100 kilos or 101, whatever, 100 kilos odd at 80 kilos body weight. Yeah, a little stretch reflex for the clean might help you for, for sure. But none of these weights, I believe, in any of the weight categories require you, uh, you that you have to do that. I think people do it because they see the best in the world, or at least, you know, Big Z has always done it. I've never seen him clean it straight to that. And I know he's the best for, you know, for a reason, but I don't yeah. necessarily think that's the quick, quickest technique. I think it will also transfer extremely well. If you can clean that dumbbell in one powerful movement, it's going to transfer well to uh, one motions, but also the sandbag loading. So you've got to look at carryover uh, from event to event. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that's a great point. You see, you see so many people pick like picking it and then dropping it again, though that like loading the loading the hips a little bit more. But I think I don't I don't think these weights are too are too heavy, to be honest. Like I, exactly. I don't like to say that because people might think, oh yeah, because just because I can do a heavy one. Like I, I was surprised. I was expecting them to I, I was expecting them to make to potentially and um, like I, I I've seen I've seen comps with what like say say European comps where they've ended like on the before before the 90s world record got set to like 115 and it was like 96 or 97 for a while or whatever. Sorry, is it 115 now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> who did that? Sorry, who did that? Um, Nick Nick Myers, uh, yeah. Uncle Nick, Uncle Nick on Instagram. I have to look him up. I didn't know uh, he, he, he won. He won under ninety worlds last year. Did he? Okay, I know. I think maybe I know the name. Just Max training, Max McCall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and he did the. Um, <laughs> it was amazing. He did the. He went for the record breaks on ESPN. Did, did you see that was that was at the uh, organized by class? Yeah. But he went, he went right. for a record and the um, they misloaded it. His first attempt, <laughs> as in it was too heavy or lopsided. Like, lopsided, lopsided, oh. and uh, and he failed it, and then it, it, picked it up, oh. and then managed to. But he, he managed to get it. It was amazing, honestly. Uh, oh. wow. <laughs> Strong. Boy. Uh, I, I did that in my final heavy session, by the way, before the before I did the Dumbo record, and I thought oh, it was, you misloaded it. Yeah, misloaded it and put extra in one side, and I thought it was failing. I think it was. I thought it was failing ninety six, and I failed it fifteen times. Yeah. I failed it fifteen times in a row. I just wouldn't leave until I did it, and then I checked it, and it was. I think it was a hundred and six. I think it was. I was doing. So I, I think it was a hundred. It was a hundred and six that I cleaned. Um, 15 cleaned times. it 50, 15 <laughs> times, and then uh, yeah. Anyway, hey, so, sometimes gym maths is hard, mate. I get clients at gigs. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so what what was I saying about that? So the yeah the, the I think that I think look if the, if the last dumbbell if say you say you somebody who's going for the last dumbbell and you feel like you can power clean the the first the, right I'll imagine right. I'm doing like say say I was doing the under nineties and I was doing and it was a monster dumbbell not a globe it was a monster dumbbell the approach that I would take on that I would like go 63, 72, 81, pretty quick and then the ninety one obviously knowing myself and knowing my, knowing my limit I've got to get I've got to get that power clean bang on to for to power clean ninety one to my sh to to my shoulders i.e. if I can do it it feels easy but there's a, there's like a significant chance that I might uh, like I might mess it up and and not be able to do it. Whereas what I would probably do on that would be I would probably do the hip clean that I've talked about before, where you, where you kind of lap it and then yeah. and then rest and then and then force it up. And it, I, I just find that obviously it's slower, but it's so much more reliable and you can get that really energy efficient so and there's not many people that you you see use that because because realistically with dumbbell you see that people that pe people usually it's the pressing strength that's the limiting factor and it's just like oh well, i could just i could just get it or something like when, when you're teaching people dumbbell to start off with you don't really go into the intricacies of the clean you just say right get it onto your shoulder see what's going on and more often than not it's the 
it, it it's the rack or the dip and drive where they're messing it up. And just like you say, like you don't see people grinding out dumbbells, do you? Uh, because because if your technique's shit, if your technique's rubbish, like more often than not, it's way out from your center of mass out to the side, and you, you don't have a chance at pressing it out. Yeah. So so most of the time when you're teaching dumbbell, it's fixing that, and you don't you don't even you. If somebody's cleans ugly, it doesn't really matter because it's never really a problem until a lot later down the line. So, um, so I feel that there's quite a lot of people that that are actually at the point where they've never, it, they've always been like it's the press that the, the that's the limiting factor. So they've never have, had to consider what they do if the clean was heavier. So. I would say if this is, this is actually near your limit, the final dumbbell or even the third one, I, I would suggest playing with the, the kind of hip clean technique. I'll attach a YouTube video to this that's just, just dead simple for you to practice. Um, and I would say that people learning the hip clean, if you're going to use it for the, potentially use it for the final dumbbell, it's, be, it's very hard mentally to get your head around why you train it because you go to like say 80 percent of your or 75 80 percent of your dumbbell max um the power clean is always going to feel easy and it's always going to feel easier than um than than doing this it's like more it's more costly like do, doing this technique but as you get up to higher percentages your power cleans like trying to explain it more simply more concise like your power clean feels easy doesn't it until you can't do it does that make sense? Like it just, you just reach a point, oh, it's easy, easy, easy. Oh, shit, I failed. Whereas with, because it, because it's, it goes back to that speed strength thing of it's just explosive and over in a flash, yeah? Until you can't do it, yeah? Um, if you do a 90% power clean, it feels easy. It always feels easy, yeah? Mm. And then you just might fail 93%, 94% or whatever. But the, um, but with the hip clean, it feels like even at 50%, it feels so, it feels like, oh my God, this is laborious. Like it feels like, oh, why am I doing this? I should just power clean it to there and then it's easy. But the thing is, it's so much more scalable as the weights go up. So if you, um, if you start off with like say 50 kilos and go 60, 70, 80, it doesn't proportionally feel more difficult. And you can just go, you find that most people will just be able to go significantly uh, heavier. So Basically, I would say that everybody who can't just breeze through all four of those, I would say definitely go and have it in your locker. Uh, go and have that that kind of clean technique where you basically, basically, keeping it simple, you're doing a log clean with the dumbbell, essentially. Yeah, you're just putting it into, you're just like lapping it, putting it into your hips and then driving your hips into the dumbbell to, to, to get it up. Um, Oh, and another little thing. Have you got anything to add on that dumbbell? On the no, no. Go ahead. Another tip. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also as well, like we could go go on for ages on this, but like I would say, like if the press is your limiting factor, lear learning how to jerk on this. Um, what I particularly like for for drilling this if you're new to the footwork of jerking and it kind of overwhelms you or whatever what i would say just for the kind of um the transfer and and also like how much volume you can accumulate in any given session while sparing energy um i would say the bit like the be learning the behind the neck split jerk if you've got if you've got a kind of if you've got access to jerk box as well brilliant because what you're just going to be able to do is just like say, do, do a bit if you do a behind the neck jerk. I'm a massive fan of behind the neck jerks for transferring to dumbbell split jerk because if you get your your rack position right on the dumbbell, it's it's a similar position. You're getting used to driving your torso up. You you you're learning the skill of maintaining the vertical torso and keeping your torso integrity. I.e., if you hinge forward or twist to the side, it feels awful. Um, I, I, I do pr prefer in terms of skill and feedback, I actually like a wide grip behind the neck split jerk for, for the dumbbell transfer because it makes your arms more redundant and make, makes them in a position where the, it's harder to, or the power that your arms are producing are having less, and, less of an effect on the bar going up. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So basically you, you're getting used to, right, well, what can I do with the rest of my body to propel this object up when my arms are useless? Yeah, that's my logic with it. Um, but what's great about training the, bar, the barbell for the rack is just, is just simple like, volume accumulation uh, and the, the convenience of it. Like with a dumbbell, you're having to clean each rep. I don't, I'm not yeah. a fan of like people repping from the shoulders because of the eccentric fatigue of just one arm. Like your arm's not that strong to be like someone like me lowering down like eight kilos to my shoulder to rep again. Like I'm not going to be able to get that much work in any, any given uh, period. So behind the neck, behind the neck jerk from the rack, like you'll just be able to drill, drill the footwork like, um, and just get loads and loads of volume in, in any given session. Uh, a lot more than you'd be able to do with the dumbbell that will just be transferable to the dumbbell. Another bo bo bonus with that, if you can do it from jerk blocks and um, like I'm a massive fan of when when the goal is pure skill development, where, say you've say you, Tom, they've done the phase of, they've done the six week phase of build being strong enough and building strength before everything else and they're strong enough. And it's like it's just like a skill acquisition block that they're doing. We don't want to get any stronger. We don't need to get any stronger. We just like basically want to learn how to display our strength that we built in the context of this event. Um, mm -hmm. So if it's pure skill development, if you can if you can eliminate eccentrics or reduce eccentric fatigue on the stuff that you're practicing, I find that it's just going to be a great way of getting more practice in at any given percentage. And I find that the, for the overhead, jerk blocks are a fantastic way of doing that because you can just unwrap, do you do your jerk really heavy? You can you can go you can get loads of volume in at quite high percentages, um, and then just dump it to dump it to the blocks every rep. Yeah, that that's my kind of take on that. The other little thing on on dumbbell as well, like I think the grip is, um, I think the grip is like quite thick i think it's supposed to be like a coke can supposedly so i would say that um overhead it doesn't matter like you, if you get your positioning right you you're not really grip you, you're not gripping it anyway the, the weight's going down into your palm kind of you're almost like it's almost almost like a if your positioning's good you could you could in theory false grip it yeah um yeah. whereas it in the in in the rack position you need to you need to learn you need to find this you see a lot of people will do a dumbbell and they'll be waste they'll be spending so much energy stabilizing that rack with the upper body and this is one of my biggest points we're finding the rack position and improving your dip and drive on dumbbell one of my biggest things is find that weightless rack position where you where i i, I get people to to actually relax their arms and actually just 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 get this completely relax this structure here because if you're in the right position where the joints are stacked down and your dumbbells don't match up your center line you'll be able to completely relax in your arm um, and then and then and then almost like add that stability on or the, creating that tension as like a cherry on the cake if you will or the last thing in the chain whereas you see a lot of people relying on the creating that tension to keep themselves in what seems like a, an okay rack position but as soon as they go to apply a leg driver, you, you see it in log Tom all the time, don't you? Where people, pe people have got, a, if you look from the side, they've got a terrible rack position where it's way in front of the, say in the rack where it's way in front of the, the foot. The, but they're giving themselves the illusion that they're in a good position because they're really forcing their elbows up. Whereas actually if they're in a good rack, in my opinion, if they're in a good rack position on the log, like their elbow should be up as like, as like a secondary thing to the thoracic extension. Does that make any sense, the way I said it? It does, it does. I think that the, the most important word you use was weightless. Yeah. I think that that's the key. That would just narrow it down. If you've got that dumbbell and it doesn't feel like there's any weight in your shoulder, arm, whatever you want to call it, if it feels weightless, you're in, you're in for a win on that. Yeah, so, so practicing because if you're you're relying on on holding that that dumbbell in position to give yourself the illusion you've got a good rack position, you might find if you're training with like a like say a normal grip dumbbell or whatever, and you go and you're trying to hold this super thick grip dumbbell at this comp, then you're going to become unstuck. But if you find that weightless rack position, it doesn't it doesn't matter as much. And then once it's overhead and you catch, 
like it doesn't matter because the, the of where the dumbbell is positioned, you could almost false grip it, like I say. 